Hi everyone, I'm Dan from jazzcomposerspresent.com, an online space where composers, musicians, and listeners come together to celebrate the music we love. I'm joined today by Alex Goodman, Juno-nominated guitarist, band leader, and composer, and winner of First Prize and Public's Choice Award at the 2014 Montreux Jazz Festival International Guitar Competition. Alex is here to show us how to develop your harmonic palette. Hey everyone, I'm excited to be here talking about um, music and musical techniques, stuff that I love. I wanted to talk about a technique that's been really helpful for me, kind of a way of organizing harmony in your brain and kind of developing a harmonic approach. So when we think about jazz harmony, I think most of the time we see five chords, um, and those would be major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, and diminished seven. So those make up the bulk of the Great American Songbook, jazz harmony, and if you follow kind of the line through them from major seven, you're just changing one note kind of by a semitone to get to that next chord quality. So major seven, flat the seven, you get to a dominant seven, dominant seven to minor seven, flat the third, so on and so on. You can kind of get all of these sounds. Now, um, you may have heard some jazz musicians or arrangers or composers who seem to have a really extensive harmonic vocabulary. Um, they have a lot of chords at their disposal. And that's a really great thing to work on. And uh, I really recommend that for everyone. But one thing that can be really interesting to think about is taking the chords that we know and maybe thinking about these really fundamental chords and thinking about how else we can use them. And in that way, maybe there's some chords that you already know really well, some really fundamental harmonies, but you can use them in all sorts of different ways, maybe to function differently and to evoke different kinds of harmonies. Um, so something that I really like to think of was maybe, well, how can we get kind of different levels of these five fundamental chords? If we're going to see these chords all the time in jazz, how can we kind of arrange them? Um, maybe thinking of consonants to dissonant, dissonance, maybe levels of color, maybe from something that's really vanilla, really plain to something that's really um, kind of colorful that uses a lot of extensions. And so something that I think a lot about is maybe the superimposition of chords. So thinking of these chords, but over different roots, and then becoming really comfortable with how else we can use these chords. So instead of maybe taking your really standard major seven chord that you're comfortable with, like as a guitar player, like I am, like a drop two major seven, one of the first chords you use. Well, maybe you could use that 12 different ways because you could put it over 12 different roots and all of a sudden you're evoking completely different kinds of harmony. Um, and something that I like to do is maybe to kind of build like a lexicon for yourself, like to develop your own vocabulary and organize the sounds that you find with these different types of chords kind of in order of color. So you kind of have your own database uh, working from kind of simple sounds to more complex sounds, um, less colorful sounds to more colorful sounds. And you can use them because you kind of internalize these sounds through your own practice and your own process. And you can bring this kind of harmony into your writing and play. Um, so maybe, you know, I'll take some really simple examples. Let's start with the major seven. Um, and, you know, I would recommend doing this for every chord type. And uh, you can actually go beyond the five basic harmonies, but it's a great place to start. So with the major seven, maybe what's like a really simple starting place? Well, one thing that I like to start with is maybe starting with... Um, some simple chords that start on the chord tone, so third, fifth, and seventh. So maybe the first level, this is a very common superimposition. I'm sure you've seen it before. What if we put E minor seven over C? So that's a chord that we know. It's one of those five basic chords, E minor seven over C. All of a sudden you have a major nine sound. Well, every time you see a C major seven, you could think about playing a minor seven or arranging a minor seven um, up a third from the root. So starting on the major third. And that doesn't need to be closed position like we have here. You could put that in drop two, drop three, drop two, three, drop two, four, to arrange it really any way you want. But it's thinking and conceptualizing it of it a little bit differently. So you're thinking of actually a minor seven sound over a third, but what you're getting is this major nine sound. Let's continue. So maybe a second level, we could start on the fifth, G major seven. So right there, we could be thinking actually of I mean, I want you to kind of go through all the chords and find the, the sounds that um, are implied 
through the different use of harmony. What if you put a dominant seven, a minor seven, a minor seven flat five, or different chords that you're comfortable with? Um, but for myself, you know, maybe a really kind of obvious second choice would be using major seven on the fifth. And that's going to evoke this kind of major nine sharp 11 with no three sound. Well, that's interesting. All of a sudden you're kind of finding a way of using that same chord major seven, but implying a Lydian sound. If you just think of using it a fifth up or a fourth down, that can be really useful, you know, when you're playing or writing, because all of a sudden you're just using these kind of tools and sounds that you know really well to evoke different functions and different colors. Let's keep going. Maybe a third level, B minor seven over C again, one of the really basic chords. Uh, now we're implying major 13, sharp 11, no three. So you kind of get that 13th more color. And these are just working off of the chord tones. You know, we could be thinking about different types of chords starting from every degree of C major. Um, you could really be thinking from, in some ways, kind of every note chromatically, kind of implying this kind of like range of colorfulness. Uh, so, you know, we could, um, even take this further, you know, what are some maybe other sounds that we could evoke? So taking this maybe to the next level, all of a sudden now, maybe we're not implying something that's coming from that kind of classic Ionian or Lydian sound for major. But if you take an E seven, again, a really basic chord, uh, dominant, the second chord we found from those five basic harmonies, and you put that on the third, all of a sudden now you have a major nine sharp five. So you're implying that sharp five sound, which um, maybe is kind of coming from a different kind of basic tonality. When I think of uh, a major seven sharp five, a lot of the time I'm kind of thinking of that sound coming from harmonic minor or melodic minor. Um, so for C, if I'm kind of thinking of that C major sharp five, maybe I'm uh, thinking about A melodic minor, or A harmonic minor. So now, you know, all of a sudden we're invoking a new kind of tonality. And that's a new color in and of itself. But we got there through just using one of the most basic chords available to us. So what I would really like to recommend for you is to really experiment with this because I'm giving you really just the introduction. And the most important thing is that you develop your own lexicon and your own vocabulary and you figure out what works for you. And the experimentation is probably the most important part. Um, and uh, this is something that's been really helpful for me to go through all of those harmonies and to come up with all sorts of different options and uh, categorizing them has been useful for myself to challenge myself to think about, well, what is more colorful for myself, for my own ear? And I think that really challenges you to ask yourself some questions about how you hear harmony, how you hear extensions, and uh, you can kind of come up with your own language, harmonic language as a result. So yeah, I recommend you to experiment on your own, question what's more colorful, what's more stable, maybe what's more complex, what's darker, What's lighter? What does that mean to you? What evokes those qualities through harmony? Uh, what sounds are personally resonant for you? So if you find a sound that um, really stands out for you and is really kind of powerful and you know that you connect with, well, I would listen to yourself on that because maybe that's a harmony that um, is kind of personal for yourself. And uh, maybe you can incorporate that into your writing or your playing in a way where that really does kind of become part of your kind of key vocabulary as a musician. And then asking yourself to categorize like what level is this sound by going through like one all the way up to wherever you're going uh, can be a great exercise because you have to kind of think about, well, what is more plain and what's more exotic. And then, you know, when you're playing music or you're writing music, you can kind of think about what kind of a sound you're trying to evoke. And um, if you've categorized things this way, then you kind of have this uh, list of, of harmonies that you can kind of draw on, even if, you know, hopefully you're not even needing to look at it because you've internalized these sounds, you'll be able to draw on sounds that maybe you didn't even know about before. So taking it maybe even one step further, we've been using the most basic chords here. And uh, that's really just a starting point. You know, we used like C major seven, or sorry, we use major seven, minor seven, dominant seven, minor seven, flat five, diminished seven sounds to experiment with first. But after that, what happens if we take it a step further? What if we go to sus two chords, sus four chords, those are alterations to those four basic ones. Sharp five, flat five, um, those are still even just four note chords, the most basic um, thirds based harmony, but just through altering the fifth or maybe the third, um, you're gonna get a completely new batch of sounds. And these ones can be 
really interesting because they're ones that maybe aren't quite as recognizable. And um, maybe when you're experimenting, you'll find that even those alterations are personally resonant or not. Maybe you find that that sound of a E7 Sus2 is personally resonant for you. And then experimenting with the 12 different possible applications of how it could work over different routes is going to lead you to a treasure trove of harmonic applications. Uh, so right here, you know, just taking that E7, and if you're familiar with that and been practicing, this alteration might be uh, really comfortable and really easy to access. All of a sudden, now you have this kind of interesting major 9 sharp 11 sound that's kind of organized in a different way. So I really recommend, you know, uh, definitely going through those five basic harmonies, extending maybe even further, maybe even thinking of more complicated harmonies that you want to experiment with chord superimpositions and write it out. Write it out for yourself, kind of come up with your own lists, challenge yourself to think about the kind of color implications of each harmony. And uh, I think it can be an extremely useful tool for composition and playing. Thanks for watching today's mini lesson. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Drop any questions, comments, or suggestions for future videos in the comment section down below. To watch our full length events and participate in live Q and A's with our presenting artists, head over to jazzcomposerspresent.com. Thanks and we'll see you next time.